so Kyle Lowry made good on his promise to be more aggressive. Marcus Saul and Ibaka look like the inside threats they're supposed to be. It helped that their Sixers counterpart, Joel Embiid, was once again sick and largely ineffective. I'm not sure if Embiid is having just a particularly terrible run of luck right now, or if consistency is a legitimate issue for him. Either way, his struggles gave the Raptors room to operate, particularly Leonard, who has no issues with consistency. He is averaging 38 points a game in this series on 62% shooting, which is insane. Yesterday, though, he was even more ruthless, dropping 39, 14 rebounds, five assists, including, yep, that game's dagger three, the three-pointer over Embiid. Afterward, Kawhi was asked about the context of what he's doing, and just like with Ibaka, he refused to really answer, saying, quote, I'm just trying to win. I'm living in the moment. I actually believe him, and at least for a day or two, he's doing something pretty incredible. He is now allowing the Raptors to live in the moment, too. At least until they're next lost, there doesn't have to be anything on the table for them except basketball, which, considering how the NBA is right now, might be Kawhi's most impressive feat of all. So, Paul, he's given them a little breathing room. It doesn't all have to be about his Kawhi staying. Right. They could actually get out of this series. Do you trust them to do it? You know, to say that I trust in the Raptors would be like I'm saying I'm trusting in Kyle Lowry, <laughs> Gasol, Ibaka. They haven't been trustworthy in this series. And so only person that's been trustworthy is Kawhi Leonard. So, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just something about Toronto. It's like every year they have these great regular seasons and then playoffs come and they fail to meet expectations. So uh, it's, it's a tough one in the air because I can't, I can't, I gotta believe that. So the answer is no, Paul. If, the, if you yeah, can't say yes, then so. the answer is no. I, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't. I mean, I don't know that I trust them. I think I trust Kawhi because yeah, he trust is Kawhi. basically okay. a cyborg right now. Right. I mean, like, he's on one of the best playoff runs in history. I mean, his nine-game playoff run so far has been one of the best. And Kevin Arnovitz detailed all the statistical breakdowns of this in his story the other day. I mean, he, Kawhi is unbelievable right now and the Raptors have never had a guy like that that when their own games when Kyle's game is maybe not there from game to game or Ibaka's game is not there they can look to Kawhi to carry them and I think one of the one of the ways that he's done so is at the defensive end where if you don't have it going offensively you can at least buy in and play defense the way that they have been and they they really frustrated Philly yesterday I know a lot of that's because Embiid was not Embiid mm -hmm. but the Raptors deserve some credit for what they're doing on the defensive end I, I think they absolutely do, and Kawhi is, of course, as you note, at the yeah. center of that. I think Brett Brown, after the game, called Kawhi like, he's Kobe, basically. He's Kobe. He's actually Kobe, except if Kobe was more efficient with his shot selection, right? I mean, he's, he's, he's doing what everyone always wanted Kobe yeah. to do yeah. with Kobe's sort of bravado and accuracy. But I will still say, it was a really close game in the yeah. fourth quarter. Even with him playing lights out, yep. even with the other Raptors contributing the way you say you can't always trust them to do, but they were doing. So to me, how much of this just depends on is Embiid playing well or not? And, and is Philly going to put their foot down or not? More than is the, are the Raptors. So Kawhi's been the best player in the series so right? far. And Embiid has looked like a guy who has a knee injury and has been really sick. And, you know, I read that story Jackie did the other, Jackie McMullen did last week about how he is getting up early and he's not sleeping and he's getting all this extra treatment. That's also why you get sick. Mm -hmm. Like, he has prioritized rehab and recovery over sleeping, and then now you get sick. Like, this is not rocket science, right? If you're not in shape and you're not able to train and push yourself, then you're going to continue to have fatigue issues. I mean, I think he's in this vicious cycle that I don't yeah. know that there's time for him to get that's out a, of. That's a major concern. See, like, they're... The reason I'm in the middle is because I only trust Kawhi and I only trust Jimmy <laughs> Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone yeah. else on both teams is like, uh, you know, who's, who's who you have faith in? I mean, Ben Simmons hasn't been consistent. Um, Tobias Harris hasn't been consistent. JJ Redick, it's like both sides, but this is a tough one. This is gonna go seven. This is a flip of a coin. I mean, I, I love how interesting all these series have gotten, particularly this one. I felt like in game three, I saw everything Philly could be. Mm -hmm. And it felt to me in that game that if Philly is everything it can be, it is probably going to beat a team that is everything Toronto can be. Because yesterday we kind of saw everything Toronto could yeah. be, right? And Ooh. it was really close as opposed to game three where it wasn't. But I'm with you, Paul. I, I don't know if Philly's going to be that team again. Yeah. So who knows, which makes for a good series.